All right, so moving on to the next section here. So we did our power. Next, we're gonna look at surface brightness. We scroll here, surface brightness right here causes emitters to keep a consistent surface brightness independent of emitter surface area. So what I think they mean by the actual area of the light itself, this area light right now, the surface of it, if we click on our light here and turn it on, as I scale the surface up, the surface of the plane is getting bigger. So the surface, so the light is actually getting more intense. So there we go. As we got a big bright light here. Now if I bring it down, the surface it gets, you know, smaller. So the light is also, I reversed it. The light is also getting smaller. So if we were to scale the surface up, but we don't want it to be this bright. Technically, we should click on surface brightness. And now what I think it, it brings it down to 100%. So if we scale this back down, the surface intensity is not changing. Again, scaling it up bigger, it's technically not getting brighter. It's just more light is in the scene because the light is bigger and it's still coming out at 100% intensity. So if we look at the next one here. The next one should be the opposite, probably. Keep instance power enable this option with surface brightness disabled and uniform scaled apply to the object causes power to remain constant okay so surface let me turn my light back on if we take the surface brightness and disable it and apply the object so i'm going to go in here surface apply scale just go apply all transforms this basically means it keeps the power the same. So now if I was to scroll this up, well, I don't really see the difference. Oh, I haven't checked it, sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the scale and then keep instance power, turn that on. Now if we scale it up, it doesn't get any brighter. It's keeping that 100% despite the surface being bigger. Like it's not even adding more light. It's basically keeping the same size. Now, if I put control A, maybe apply scale. No, it doesn't really change. Now, if we scale it up, you can see it's clearly not getting any brighter versus when we went to this also versus this. So it's a minute difference. It depends on probably what you want to do with that light in that situation, but basically play with these two values. So our next one will be double sided and it's just exactly what it says, double sided. If I click on the light right now, if I hit double sided, it makes it both sides now are lit. Next will be distribution. Controls the light pattern. You can set this to a grayscale or RGB image so that you can load in an image texture or IES file. The image texture projection node adjusts the light's orientation and direction. Now, this is where we possibly want to use our gobo, right? Or an IEL or an IES file, which I actually have. The IE, let's go ahead and first load in our image. So we're going to use our same image we had earlier. I'll drop that into the distribution and let's go ahead and fire up the render. I'm going to set my light back to where it was. Okay, so here's what we got. We got 100%. I'm going to go probably crank this up a little bit, maybe to 500. And I can clearly see there is some color being produced out of this. You know what? For the sake of this, I'm going to find something that has a little bit more color so we can really see the difference. All right, so I got a different image pumped in here. And what we're going to try to do is see if we can get the image to focus in the reflection here. What we're going to do is we're going to actually click on the actual lights tab over here off to the side. And this is where we can change the lights, you know, shape and different like that. But here's our size. We're going to scroll this down. And up oh, there it is. Check it out. Now we can clearly see the image again. I got to go super. The, the smaller you go, the tighter and cleaner it's going to be. We can clearly see our projection is off. Add in a projection node. What I'm going to do is add in a box node. OK, and with that projection node in here, now we can clearly see it being projected onto the ground. Now it is repeating and it's all stretched out. So we would probably have to let's go object space. Let's see what that changes. Anything world space. Oh, world space gets a little bit closer. IES doesn't work. Vice versa, if we wanted to use this as a gobo in, you know, or to do like a gobo breakup, let's go ahead and set that up. All right, so now I'm gonna grab a noise texture. I'm gonna plug in the noise texture again into the distribution. 
let's fire up the render and see what we can do if we can get this texture to project down onto the ground so we can up and boom there it is it's already happening so we would just come in here make it a hard edge we'll go 50 and there it is that's how you will get your gobo happening again the more detail we can do more details here or you can basically just play with this however you want but there that is and again to control the sharpness or how sharp this image looks you're gonna have to go over here to the side panel and get to the light source and then here change the size if i go up to point two here now it's big and it's soft here and that's how you can do the gobo with just using uh basically a procedural noise texture again i'm using a perlin noise plugging that straight into distribution and then controlling it by your size by using your size over here again i think this defaults to one i think it defaults to 0.25 meters so there's something nice and soft Again, if you want to get something more harder, go down to maybe like a 0.2. That's kind of soft. And then even more 0.02. And now we're back to our hard, our hard edge there.